Hello, everyone. First of all, I would like to thank you again for joining us with a new topic of Aviva Select Gulf webinar series. Today's session is part of our campaign, Digital Twin Design and Operate Digitally. I believe you have started receiving some assets regarding this campaign from brochure to white papers and other marketing collaterals. And today we will be going with the webinar. We are just uh, having today my colleague Tamim Qima, who will be sharing with us like 45 minutes to talk about this topic, to, 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 to understand a little bit more about it. So I will just uh, uh, leave you in, in safe hands with Tamim. And if you have any questions during the webinar, please type it in the question box so we can answer it by the end of the webinar. So, hi Tamim. Hi Nadir. Uh, thank you everyone for attending and uh, good morning uh, everyone. Uh, okay, so what we're going to uh, discuss and why we're going to discuss today the solution for Aviva is basically something that we touch base on, 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 on many things that we do on a day-to-day -day basis is where we involve in file sharing and involves in sharing information across the organization and, and this is really um, you know, when it comes to a lot of activities that uh, you're conducting on a day-to-day -day basis, to look for the right information, this is what really comes uh, sometimes a pain uh, and, 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 and harden. So, with today's presentation is... Tamim, I think we lost your voice. Right. Uh, can you hear yes. me now? Yes, okay. yes, that's my... uh, Okay, so what we're going uh, to cover today as part of the agendas of today is, is we're going to uh, shed the lights on the uh, Aviva comprehensive offering, and that's from digital to operation. And uh, what are, uh, what are the uh, unified engineering um, uh, solution offered? Uh, and how really does does it bring value to the project landscape? And uh, also, you can uh, we'll shed the lights on the uh, cloud offering as well. And then we will um, end up with the demo and some other snapshots uh, uh, to 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 demonstrate how it really looks. Now, within the entire Aviva portfolio, uh, we are uh, providing a comprehensive solution that really. Um, gets you engaged with your customer from from even the design and engineering phase. So where where you can um, help to design um, uh, a plant uh, that will bring bring it to uh, to to be delivered on time and budget, and then helps them to improve uh, and monitor the operation and to improve the efficiency. So there's a set of different certain tools that also to um, manage the uh, the assets from an from an health uh, and, and status perspective now within the digital twin and and this is where we bring in all different um, aspects of of solutions uh, where you have um, involved in uh, or we have tools that get you involved with the customer to do the design the engineer and to help um, to put the plants uh, in an operation and how should it look once you have all the uh, uh, design details are done and then creates uh, the digital handover between um, the real time uh, among the real time operation and the engineer static information where it helps you to uh, to look into these aspects into uh, into into a one common um, uh, one common or one unified um, interface. Now the focus today will be only on the design and engineering build, and to bid to to put a little bit of context on to understand what what really values we bring. We have to really to understand how these um, projects uh, usually um, uh, operated and and how complex it can get. So first, if we would look that with if each with each and every project, you have an owner. Um, the the owner who actually does um, you know uh, pay for the entire thing the owner who does have a requirement who will pass it over for the um, engineering team uh, let me just put the cursor to pointer so I can point okay 
so so uh, I believe if if, if uh, 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 I mean when 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 the engineering or the requirements pass to the engineering team, uh, that that will help them to create the overall uh, engineering design where you have uh, different disciplines with the engineering team uh, as well. So. Uh, so within the engineering team also they would have uh, uh, so okay to start off with the um, there's always an uh, as i mentioned that owner who is basically um, uh, sponsoring the project and and want to receive uh, the facility at the end of the day or the end of the project uh, that that he can run and operate so whatever whatever uh, creates a process i mean whatever that that the process will be creating that will be paying uh, that sorry. So 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 whatever the engineering functions that are that are putting together to create those information or to bring those information together to do the detailed design uh, that that is required by the owner or if it can be done or can be built, those are the team normally um, involves um, you know a different set of discipline or different number of disciplines. You have the processing, the piping, um, the civil. Uh, the the construct, the mechanical instrumentation, electrical. So those teams, they 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 actually working together to create those deliveries. Okay. Now at the end of the day, um, at the end of the day, they they need to provide those information in the form of a document or data that goes into the fabricators, uh, constructors who would assemble those you know different pieces of the plant and and finally. You know, build uh, build it and bring it together to get uh, mechanically to, to get it mechanically completed. I would say. Then, at the end, uh, there's another team called the commissions, uh, the the commissioners, where they will uh, have to again, you know, go back to the engineering and validate uh, how how the process should be commissioned and what are the process that is ongoing. So there's there's a various parties that are. Um, really involved in this project that that creates uh, that that creates multiple um, layers within the projects. Some 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 something that that's really important to understand is about these teams that there's a lot of silos that are involved uh, over time and 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 how the information moves really between one to to another parties. Now and and this also there's there's a lot of data dependency I would say. Uh, that 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 so so to bring those you know getting information and move from 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 one to another and keep you know updating those information as it, as it goes through. Uh, of course, to bring the engineering process, it's normally start with the process where uh, normally uh, they will uh, create the process design and then uh, then the mechanical design, then then they will pass it through the pipe. The the, uh, the the piping team uh, and 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 the design basically it starts more and get bigger and bigger and then you have the whole facility design. Now those engineering data uh, get fab gets, get passed to the fabricators and 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 they build it and then and then the construction fabricator where typically they will have um, you know um, team to do the work off site or maybe they will do it as a pre build or skid. And then they will uh, send it on to the site. And then you have the commissioning information that comes both from the constructors um, and the engineering team as well, so they can know how things are going to work and how it is, uh, and how 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 complete it is. So all of those teams um, uh, need to have a backend communication with the owner at the end of the day. And and then of course, if you got Third party involves uh, the uh, involved in this uh, process. Uh, the other engineering team should swap data back and forth uh, with them. And these, and, and also you need to know that that there's a final work of uh, maybe you require the, uh, uh, to have something delivered to the packaging vendor, and you need to know what utilities that they might need in order to uh, uh, to have a tie and over uh, and the overall plan. And there's like a communication back and back and forth with them as well. And likewise, to define what equipments you need from, um, you know, valves or from um, uh, pumps or, or, or what are vendors that you are dealing with, they will always also involve the communication back and forth. Now, of course, on top of these layers, you have the layer of the project management and another project control 
you know aspects functions um, that that really helps and support to execute this project that happens in all of these layers. So, so the key takeaway I would see uh, from this it's it's, it's the, the there are some of solutions that we provide part of uh, our 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 offering that that are dealing with multiple entities. Um, here's part of the project team. So yes, the project um, um, the, the 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 structure that we have here is really complex, with a lot of you know interface barriers and with with both you know construction uh, uh, contractual and organizational. I would say it's the other key thing that that uh, you know creates a tons of data that gets generated during the project as it's evolved over time. Now, uh, the the of course you know. You would you'd have to have the people mature enough, you know, that that will enable um, their work uh, to be shared, uh, or their work done or complete from the end to be shared with other disciplines, and 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 you will have a lot of uh, you know dependency uh, on how those data has been managed and how it's shared, uh, was it validated? Now you make sure that that uh, those uh, that has been passed to the next absolutely is right. And, uh, and and it is critical on overall project success. Now, if you would look at the um, you know the the engineering part where where actually we provide a solution um, uh, as as part of the unified engineering is basically um, you know it's a it's a it's it's a small contributor to the entire project life cycle if if, if you if you can see here front of you. Because it, it it takes uh less than ten percent, I mean, as as from the slide from, from the entire project. And as you can see, the procurement and construction is taking forty percent. So if if there is an engineering errors um uh, within within that ten percent, it's really um, you know, it will it will impact the cost uh, the cost of the engineering errors. Uh, it will impact in, uh, around 14.2% uh, of the total cost of ownership. And that will cost, uh, of course, uh, the, the, the rework um, uh, to be around 5.4% 5, uh, 5 of the total construction cost. So, so it's really, it's really um, a small slice, but an overall cost uh, of the project really uh, leave you know, a huge impact on how how things are done um, um, initially, so it's not going to function correctly uh, uh, if uh, it's it's if if it's uh, if you design things uh, with an errors, it's not going to function uh, correctly. And although the procurement and construction phase makes up really a huge uh, project cost of this, where uh, you start to end up uh, with uh, with big overruns. So there's a lot of cost that you have. Uh, there, there's a, cost, a lot of cost involved if you if you didn't do um, um, you know a detailed I would say uh, uh, engineering design in a, in a prospect way where it can really minimize I would say the overruns uh, across the entire project and of course it will increase the project delays and uh, you know um, uh, but, uh, and, you know the budget and uh, as well. Uh, you know the EPC will always, you know, um, find a way to increase the efficiency uh, among among their disciplines, and and of course make it make it on budget. So as an our approach here is about the unified operation, uh, about the unified um, engineering solution is to bring in all the um, uh, teams or disciplines into into a one single. Um, form of data exchange or single form of, of data source or, or information source, where the Viva Unified Engineering uh, really can help here. Uh, and, and it will really improve how we can execute the project by providing a single digital thread for all which uh, data communicated and managed uh, among them digitally. So it does. It, it actually provides. Um, um, we intend to provide a workflow that will allow those disciplines to ensure that they have a contract, the correct information, um, uh, as as they need, and they are being notified with the changes. 
uh, now the changes could be um, edited by different disciplines and changes will not be applied unless if it's verified and approved. Now, this will actually uh, be recorded and, and with, with, uh, with all the course corresponding uh, changes will be recorded with date and you know, specific date and time and user who, who actually committed on that changes. So the process team, if you would look at it now from that perspective, if we start with the process team, the process team now can um, do a multiple iteration uh, of, their, of their design and, and, and to achieve an optimized design knowledge. And that can be uh, transferred or communicated uh, within that single unified um, database. Uh, the other disciplines, the drafter maybe can use um, uh, that process to simulate and to ensure that is effective and accurate and produce a deliverable based on that. The mechanical engineer also can have um, an access to whatever work that's been done and then uh, and, and, and then you know uh, build on top of it or, or build based on that uh, as long as, as as long as those data has been uh, validated and, and correct information has been provided. Now, for example, if, if there's any uh, routing or change in the routing uh, from, from the pipeline, from, from the piping uh, team that has to be done, um, then they will have really to check and validate what was the last modification or changes that's been made before they generate um, uh, the, the, their PNID drawings. So, the cost estimate that can pull the data from these different data uh, source uh, is to ensure that you have really the accurate estimate uh, uh, of, of the cost that can really refine over time. When 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 it's come when it's coming to <coughs> when it's coming to the safety, then you have that single source of truth that that really provides this visibility that they need to make those effective decisions and execute their Ask effectively. So, when you have all the list of um, um, you know process design, um, module design, 3D design, data sheets, are consolidated are brought in, in, in between those disciplines, and all of those modifications has been modif uh, has been validated and checked, then you would have really an accurate handover for for dependence for for procurement process and material. And material um, uh, uh, acquisition, and you know, and, and and they will receive all the the validated copy uh, from from that database. And then here, where would you reduce really the working hours if you have imposed any changes and and they have not been notified with? But everything will be validated before actually they hand over to 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 the actual contractors and fabricators and commissions. So. One of the things, uh, one one of the things that is good where we see is, is you know, most of the um, industry are really improving by adopting the industry 4.0. It's really a great example for, you know, um, you know, bringing the idea of of that that all the data will be uh, in in the middle. That really makes a lot of impact on how 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 really we improve the processes uh, among among different disciplines. And this is what um, what what really leads us to what we call as the EPC 4.0 uh, 4, 4 model. Now, uh, some of the functions and team are brought together um, um, and, and and start to think digitally about it. So let's there's the, the, there's there's a lot of cases uh, on the previous example mentioned where communicated through documents. Now here. What you have to do is to create a set of information and put it in the document, um, and 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 then review it, uh, uh, check it, and then post it to the uh, document control system. Which I, I believe that will not really in a, uh, be an effective solution. But then somebody will uh, will receive those documents and then review it. Um, of course, they will receive it and pack it and then review it and then uh, put their comments on and then they will send it back. So. The, there's there's a lot of process that involves and and, and that matters and yes it's defined the workflow but it's not digital again 
So it can happen across, um, you know, uh, many, 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 many uh, layers within within the same, I would say, engineering. And that could be within the engineering, could be from the engineering to the constructors, fabricators, and with the owners and so. In in the module here, um, on the EBC module here, we we put the data in, in centrally here in the middle. And 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 if if we think more of having the information that you need to point it out, um, uh, to point you out to the information is is different from sharing the information uh, with you. I would say across uh, documents or across uh, spreadsheets or data sheets. Now. The the information should not be transferred. I would say, you know, the information uh, it's it's between or in the middle between the the engineering disciplines. So you will start to use it as it's as as you're creating your design or you're creating your simulation or you're creating um, you know your your design data, and it will evolve because everything is located in the central area. So, uh, so when everything is create, when everything is centralized in a in a single area, then you know who accessed it, uh, you know who worked on it, you know who actually added any points, if there's any comments has been added. And then you start to manage uh, these based on on an object and attributes and a status as well, and all the work stuff, uh, which is will allow you also to, uh, allows you um, um, to have a set of standards applied into that uh, central database uh, where the entire system will start to you know um, you know follow those standards and uh, will be applied to people who are contributing to the overall information generation now uh, just just consuming those information instead of uh, uh, you know uh, really sharing the cross will, will really save a lot of um, efforts for you, um, uh, you know, in terms of validating, in terms of getting the feedbacks, and this really adds, uh, this really helps within, um, you know, assessment and managing of those changes in a very high transparency level, where it will bring us to the point where uh, you can bring in the client also to interface with, uh, to 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 bring the client and the stakeholder, for example, to, for for their feedback in order to minimize cost. And I will shed the lights later on on this one. Of course, uh, uh, you don't, uh, as, as, as I mentioned, you don't need, need to share information. Um, instead, you would have to point them to the right information. And, and I will take an example here is, um, if, if you want to guide someone to, to come to your location or to your office, for example, instead of, um, staying with him and guiding him on the way through, uh, you would just have to share with him where you stay, and then they will find the best route to, to find you. So this is where is is uh, you know where 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 uh, we point them to the right information, and and they will just um, access it. So that's that's really kind of change and philosophy where we're trying to bring here. That also opens the part of transparency, which I mentioned earlier. Uh, which is really an important key point. So you can bring your client, um, the project, the project stakeholders, into the engineering phase where they provide uh, an input on the constructability uh, and what make their job easier, so the cost can do, go down. And you know, because this is maybe an easier to fabricate or easier to construct uh, or, or easier to commission. So it's really, um, you know, the other big thing that that now we're able to push the digital information from the engineering phase into the construction and commissioning phase for them, uh, for them to plan their actual execution. So actually, you'll be able to have the dynamic between those teams, and and of course, it would be otherwise, um, you know, fairly static and waiting for them, uh, wait, waiting for the, uh, you know, the handover, then they can stand, uh, they, they, then they can, you know, start actually to plan the work. So, so they can dynamically be involved with you during the engineering phase, so to make it more dynamic. So at the, at the end of the job, um, you know, the handover, which enables really a continuous handover, where you are getting ready for the operation that, 
that uh, the operation that, that, that the data can be pushed into the team. We're going to use the information again to run the facility. And that's really an important part on how the whole strategy comes in together. And, and that's really uh, the strategy around the unified um, um, engineering or the EPC 4.0. So as of the tools that they can use um, um, in order to and in order to create that simulation design is basically focused focused around the unified engineering where you have um, the the process simulation tool, the the process dynamic simulation, and the cost estimate, where those are connected and the unified um, um, engineering, where they are shared the same database, they share the um, the um, uh, the, the the information will be there as a contextualized, and of course, um, this is where the focus of the EPC 4.0 tools that can be uh, used and utilized within the unified engineering. Now, of course, there are other tools as well to help you on the project execution, and of course, help you on the unified learning where you can really see how the plant should behave or uh, create those operational uh, behavior modules uh, that that you know, bring your operators up to the speed in order to know how they would, uh, what, what they would be expecting if they would, uh, uh, you know, attend the facility for an operation. And uh, of course, the unified information management is where it can access to those different, um, uh, you know, information, I would say centralized information that has been created in different areas where you can see that information on, on, a, on a tag, Base, uh, and then I will show you some example uh, the more we move on with the slides. So, when we talk about the EPC uh, 4.0, we refer to um, to the tools that that helps to create those specification and and create those um, specification data or information. Uh, it has a different dimension, so it can be creating the process module and the process uh, and the dynamic modules. Uh, it could be uh, a set of um, a line list or instrumentation index or data sheets or reports. Um, it could be the 2D, which is the PNID, the, the ISO metrics and, and the shop drawings. And of course, uh, the 3D uh, modules, uh, you know, from a, from a 3D scanner, if we're talking about the front field or, um, or 3D modules where, where all of those um, information and, and specs and data sheets can 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 interact together in a one common database. Now, to add on top of that, we added the maturity status of the information. Where if this information is being validated, if this information needs um, a rework done, or if this information needs more, uh, 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 if there's comments to be addressed, or if this is rejected, so. Those are the maturity of interaction that we create between the disciplines. And of course, not to forget is, is that the relationship, uh, the relationship and the context, so you can uh, see how the build and how the operate of all the plant can, you know, managed in parallel. So, so this is sort of a bringing the difference relationship that managed in parallel. With uh, not 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 uh, not in hierarchy, but no, in a in a, in a landscape mode where you can um, uh, really see things and a perception here when it comes to um, you know contextualized information or contextualized data that make more sense. <clears throat> so, seeing the example of what we're talking about is is. Uh, is where we bring all those disciplines into a one, uh, uh, you know, common database. They are collaborating in a common set of data, they're doing their pieces, and, and, and this work is being continued to elaborate whatever detail is being evolved. So they can have, you know, all those information passed into procurement and uh, maybe construction, and then the operation team. And on top of that, uh, you have the project manager who can see um how how this is evolving how much data do i have and, and is it done so they can monitor the status of of the video so it's really um will accelerate the overall um uh, project um you know kick startup and then uh to bring in transparency among the different disciplines and uh, of course 
uh, the validation and the wrong data that will be really an, 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 an important factor to the to the project success from a, from a, from a deliverables perspective to make sure that there's no errors or there's no information is being missed or there's no uh, uh, data has been, I would say, uh, manipulated in a different way where, where you have been um, maybe exposed to the old version document or, or the, um, the or, or different data sets. Um, with this video, we will walk you through uh, different stages where we will start, um, you know, underlining what are the tools that we provide in simulation and what if we would need to change any um, uh, parameters within the simulation or objects within the simulation and how the PFDs will be generated into that database and how this will be uh, validated with the engineering um, uh, database where, where it will impact the design and how this will reflect eventually with, with the overall project. So this is video and I will be uh, trying to walk you with the uh, will uh, walk you through the uh, different elements here. So when we start with the simulate, and this is bringing an example that the simulate has already has been created, and uh, there is a change that has been imposed during the simulation stage, and this is using the sim central where it generates um, uh, multi-purpose simulation um, uh, platforms across across um, different different um, uh, simulation iteration. Now. Once the changes have been made, now we'll do and compare a multiple design, okay? So to, to streamline the process uh, stream data. And this is where uh, access, you know, as you say, as you saw the, the engineering and publish those newly simulated information to the Aviva engineering. And this is where the Aviva engineering that sees that there's um, a bending notification that has to be applied on the base case and we'll import those changes and then we'll validate, uh, we'll compare what was the status, uh, what was uh, the case and what was the case after. It says that this is a lower temp case and uh, the information has been imported well. And this is where I do the comparison if you want to commit the final changes and then import them to the, uh, to the design where it will reflect uh, the changes within the engineering as as in PI and ID. So you can see uh, it's just where the changes has to be applied, and you can see how it's drag uh, the uh, dragging the components onto a wrong location and says no that they have to drop it in the right aspects in order to to be uh, aligned with whatever simulated data or whatever changes that has been created in simulated data. Here, where you can create the data sheets. And of course, apply the uh, the changes that has been imposed initially. And again, it will when 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 you will actually ask to update those uh, base, I would say, uh, uh, simulation into the entire engineering drawing. Then it will shows you uh, how this can uh, really affects on generating those documents, and then deliver it to the uh, engineering um, the engineering area. So. When the changes are basically been approved, now you you will have to go and propagate that across um, for uh, that 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 will be reflected on the three D drawings, and then you will update the database and accordingly it will go and suggest what are the um, um, the, the 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 specification or the new specification that has to be applied. Uh, you, of course, you can view it, uh, you know, in a different set of reports, data sheets, uh, PNID drawings, and accordingly, you can have those um, information updated. So, when we go to the detailed design uh, of a certain instrumentation, uh, where you would have um, to impose some changes to the descriptions, and uh, those. Uh, changes would, would be applied only if you would update the database and you say you can say that it goes through a validation of, of each and every steps that if you would need to impose any changes um, then then those uh, has to be confirmed and has to be mapped with the design because uh, at the end of the day um, it has to be validated because you, you, you I mean you're not working in silos anymore you're, you're pointing out to the same design firm um, uh, database. 
So the changes that you applied here, when you do compare with the 3D drawing, actually is are not showing here. So what 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 to do now is where it, it build actually the drawings that that uh, that you have accumulated in PNID and build it again on the 3D design, and then suggest that okay, do you want to create uh, the, uh, the the drawing uh, the um, the PNID drawings for the same changes, and this is where it could take it back to the simulation and make sure that yes, it has been validated with whatever drawing that you have built in order to match the simulation database or the process design with whatever you uh, have built inside the engineering. So <clears throat> this is where you verify the equipment, uh, the, the used equipment, where it goes uh, more detailed to determine um, the, the flow uh, throughput or output and uh, again, uh, you see, as you can see, all the, all the steps, a step on the way here is that really you have to, um, you know, to get um, the data or the changes validated on each step of, on the way, where you can uh, make sure that there's there's no detail has been missed uh, or or lost in, in uh, you know um, among among those uh, among different disciplines within the engineering units. So here's um, running uh, different uh, uh, running the simulation based on the new changes, and again you're getting a different you know uh, set of data based on the changes uh, to verify that uh, it's operatable. Yes, uh, now with the with the uh, having having the the centralized uh, engineering database and when and having in, in the middle and having those constants uh, constants i would say handover process where it actually can um you know send the required and the approved uh, um, data or information and communicate with the, um, you know whatever tools that is Provided by Aviva from a, from an, uh, an asset performance management, from a, an inspection detail, from um, enterprise asset management, or historic information, or operational uh, aspects where where we have the set right of uh, you know verified as built information is being um, handed over digitally and communicated digitally with the operation and maintenance. This is where we bring in the engineering. Um, uh, set of information or the validated engineering set of informations, uh, reports, drawings, uh, data sheets, uh, 3D modules into into a communication with the real-time operation um, aspects. So an, uh, an example here where you can see the 3D drawing at the back end, uh, what are the static reports? And the health reports over the, over the specific assets, uh, the the dynamic simulation, maybe the PNID and the engineering drawings, and again, this is the trends on on that particular asset. So this is where actually we have those all sets of information are brought into a one single user interface where you would have you know uh, uh, the right source uh, or, or the right information or contextualized information for for for, uh, for a particular selected assets within your organization and this is where it forms the the digital engineering um, or the digital twin that will combine the digital engineering and the digital operation now of course, we have uh, proven examples that has been uh, uh, brought by, by by our customers that has been really verified and proven that really it adds value to their, uh, you know, uh, digital. So, so we look at the at, at um, uh, you know, <coughs> sorry. So, so we we will have in mind that the business um, outcomes that we have we start with Veolia that it helps to reduce. Uh, it helps um, uh, the engineering, the, the engineering energy, uh, uh, the engineering, uh, the digital engineering or the unified engineering helps really to um, uh, to have the man hours reduction of 40% across the projects. That which includes basically a 5% reduction on the rework uh, that has to be um, uh, engineered due to the higher quality of developers. And not only that, plus it, 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 it means that the engineer have an access now to the right information that he needs to ensure that that the, that the engineer will have their 
um, maximizing their time doing the task that really adds value and, and, and really breaks down the barriers to remove the silos and to enhance the collaboration and so on. So all of this together means that you can have, um, uh, or you can produce a high matured um, engineering that are much faster and the project really um, could be feed design project into a detailed um, design, which really achieve a high matured field uh, feed project, uh, uh, you know, faster, much, and, and of course enhance the decision taking that that will direct the project to to uh, to pick up much faster on uh, on 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 the delivery or on on the handover stage. So this is this is where we have those um, um, approving cases. And as I said at the beginning, um, you know, having those consolidated uh, unified engineering um, tools that can be shared among different, um, uh, that can be shared among the different layers within the project uh, landscape, that really helps and, uh, you know, uh, realize or helps, helps and, you know, reduce the engineering man hours and of course provide the engineering efficiency for the engineer to deliver uh, the the plant uh, to deliver the plant into the operation and to have the right information hand over uh, for 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 your operation team as well uh, when it comes to an actual. Move. So with this, uh, we'll end up uh, um, my uh, uh, slides today. So uh, now they're back to you if you have any questions. Thank you, Tamim. Thanks for this uh, smooth presentation, let me say. So now, ladies and gentlemen, please, if you have any question or clarification, please feel free to, to type it in the question box so we can answer it. In the meantime, Tamim just wanted to apologize from the audience for the delay that happened today. Since we are facing a minor technical issue, we went actually very fast with the introduction. And even I forgot to introduce myself for the people who are joining for the first time. So this is Nader Hamad with you from Aviva Select Gulf and I'm handling the channels and marketing. Regarding this assets and this campaign, we actually started since like two months from now and uh, we have already received some of uh, some in encouraging feedback from many of you, uh, especially that this campaign is bringing an interested topic since the Aviva Unified Engineering completes, let's say, the full cycle and bank our offerings toward our customers, system integrators, and EPC contractors as well, really comprehensive. And that's one of the key factors, let's say, that differentiate us from any vendor in the market. So uh, we are just keen to receive your questions so we can start asking, to, uh, answering it along with Tamim. Uh, let me start, Tamim, with the ones that we received earlier. Mm. Okay, how do you license the unified engineering? I mean, yeah, um, it's basically uh, uh, it's based on a concurrent user license, uh, based on the functionality. So each functionality, if we would cover the E3D, uh, the instrumentation, uh, the electrical, all of them are licensed based on uh, user access, and it's a concurrent user access. Uh, the license also goes for uh, for a subscription. Uh, uh, we have uh, a three month, six month, one year subscription as well as available because these tools can be uh, used for a certain purpose and and then um, create that handover document and deliver to the client. Okay. Uh, second question: What difference between on premise and the cloud solution? and how to choose between them? Well, yeah, uh, I shared the lights on, on having like that centralized um, database in between multiple disciplines. And of course, that centralized database uh, or, or, you know, that, that really brings the access from different, um, you know, engineering, I would say disciplines could be on premise if, if, your, if your engineers are basically located in one area, but in most of the cases that we worked in, uh, most of the engineering team are basically um, uh, residing in different locations. Uh, locations means uh, it could be uh, different cities, different countries, where we bring in the Aviva Cloud solution where you, you don't really have to install anything. I mean, it's a, it's a SaaS module that um, also uh, that, that enables you to access it with the right access uh, level. 
and and you will have an access to you know all the tools that has been displayed uh, uh, on cloud. So it's really it's really adding you know uh, instead of you know having a common share uh, file where where anyone can do any changes and it's not really monitored or is not validated. Uh, the difference is, is that that you will have those validation and checks and 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 errors and comments all in the one common cloud database where where every, where every discipline can can have an access to it. And all what you need is just a a, a normal workstation with uh, with internet access and a web portal. That's it. And the right, of course, access username and authentication. Okay. Thank you. Um, we have also many questions, I believe, from the same team. Uh, some of them we have answered that, like, for example, they're asking about some uh, proven track record of implementation about success stories. So Tamim shared a few examples during the slides and we'll be sharing as well more details with you by email uh, about the way we are dealing with this and what's the role for Aviva and Avia Select as well. We can discuss it later on by one-to-one -one call to make sure that we are going with the clear model that we use to work always with you. Third question, uh, what kind of communication interfaces are possible with Aviva system control and instrumentation? What kind of communication interfaces protocol? Okay. Um... Now, for Aviva uh, E3D and instrumentation, electrical, they, and, and the other um, engineering, I would say, tools, they all share um, a one common database. It's called Debicon. Now, uh, basically, they are not in different databases. They are all in the same database. So, uh, of course, a different handover or different export documents that can be generated, uh, whether it's a report, whether it's a PNID, uh, 1D or 3D graphics, that's all can be uh provided as an export and uh, yeah there is there's is some integration with other i would say engineering tools from, from other vendors as well that's also possible we can discuss this in detail maybe um, if you have any uh, particular um, uh, tool that you're using and you want to convert to aviva we do have that conversion um uh, as well to bring it into aviva database okay thank you uh is the simulation product same as SimSci? Yeah, uh, is this actually has been rebranded and renamed as an Aviva simulation. It's uh, uh, the DICEM, the SimPro, and the SimSci. It's all uh, it's all under the Aviva simulation. Yes. Okay. So just to remind everyone, please, you can type it in the question box only, so we can uh, have them listed. Uh, next one. You have shown all Aviva products integration. However, owners and operators are using different suite of software from various solution providers. How do you take care of data integration and reduction and, and reduction of data loss across the interfaces? Okay, uh, so there's there's a two different aspects of so this. Um, this if, if the clients are using a different tool, uh, that's easily can we can create a conversion. I would say uh, workflow between our tool and to the other tool, but uh, this is most of the work that will be done in manual manual base. But what we can offer here is um, maybe I did not shed the lights really on onto onto it today. Is the AvivaNet is where we can integrate the different engineering tools into a one common view, where it can bring all those you know contextualized source of information based on an asset or based on a um, an object uh, bring them into a one view. So uh, this is this is of course can be done. Um, I would really advise to um, sit in detail maybe and discuss how we can um, uh, bring this uh, uh, you know the access for the stakeholders and the client into into our um, you know engineering view. Okay, um, the change from P and ID to three D. Is it only the P and ID done by the other platform, or we can read it across platforms? I don't know if it's a clear question. Uh, can we get the changes from the P and ID into 3D? Yeah. yeah. Is it only the P and ID done by the Aviva platform, or we can read it across platforms? 
Um, okay, so as I as I mentioned the slide, there is a different set of um, forms where you can uh, generate the data. And so we have tools for the PNID, uh, uh, which is the one uh, one D and two D, and those are the kind of documents that you can generate uh, from from those tools. Now the three D is another way of 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 viewing your design um, information, let's say. And that's where it's on a 3D module base. So all of those tools are basically sharing the same database, but it's a different way of, of how you want to export or generate those handover documents for the clients. So I'm, I'm not sure if this answers your question. I think so. Okay, I mean, thank you. Um, Someone is asking if we'll be sharing the slides later with them. Hey, I just want to take this opportunity to remind everyone that on the chat box, you can see all uh, the links for our uh, social media platforms, our page on LinkedIn, the YouTube channel. So you can just follow us and subscribe you so you can just always. At the same time, you can see, uh, you can see the webinar recording also on the YouTube channel. Uh, let me take like one or two more question. We're already late. Uh, how much is required for a human interface to do the conversion? Uh, how much required for a human interface? For human interface? I, I didn't really get the question. Uh, I mean, from a, from an knowledge on Aviva tools, or from uh, well, <clears throat> basically, I mean, the the one thing take away from uh, I mean, additional to the the easiest uh, tool to deal with is with, with Naviva. It really requires, you know, not, not more than uh, three to four days to be able or to get up to the speed to work with our tool. Now, as for the conversion, um, you know, if 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 that if that's what you meant is from from other uh, tools that you're using, such uh, as AutoCAD or uh, author of it. So those those can be uh, sit and discussed in detail because some of the convergence will be uh, auto semi semi auto or or sub and, and the other will be manual. So this is something that we can really discuss in detail. Okay. Okay. Uh, last question, Tamim. Mm. Integration between all engineering software programs will be using Aviva Engineering. And what about non-engineering departments, such planning, cost, HSC, extra? Exactly. This is where actually I I shed the light down it here. Let me just yeah, exactly. So in the planning and the um, uh, we call it the Aviva Unified Execution Solution, where you would. Um, you know, they would they would have an access uh, to be able to plan ahead and and to be uh, you know on a step uh, uh, with you once the handover document or the hand or the engineering that they would lead engineering is it's missing and set a percentage and those are using other tools as well from Aviva. Actually, we did not share the lights on on those tools, but what we have indicated that, that that the planning team will be part of, of or will be engaged with you. I will not wait and sit ideal until um, uh, the, the handover uh, document or the handover data has been uh, shared with them or has been appointed to them. However, um, they can have uh, a different type of access to um, those tools that, that uh, help them to only generate documents or help them to generate information that will help them on the planning. Uh, uh, and, and this is, you know, during, um, the, during the design phase. Okay. Tamim, I think we can just stop with, this, uh, with these questions. But uh, for everyone who has raised the question or no, for all of you, ladies and gentlemen, we'll be sending you an email after this webinar. So please, let's uh, feel free to raise any question. You still have clarification. We can have one-to-one -one call to discuss more into this interesting topic. So from my end, just wanted to thank you for, uh, for your time today. Tamim, thank you so much for, uh, for the slides, for your time and effort. Most welcome and thank you all. And please feel free to reach us if you have uh, more, more, more. If you want more detailed discussion on any specific topic, thank you all. Thank you.
Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.